Hey guys. It feels super strange to be talking to you from the comfort of my home. Anyways, I wanted to go over what I took on my GDT solo hike. Um, I've always been someone who wasn't like initially wasn't into gear and having the best gear. And as I've done a lot more backpacking, I've really formed a pretty strong opinion on why I use the systems that I use and what works for me. So keep in mind that I do most of my backpacking in the Canadian Rockies. Really variable weather, lots of wet, lots of cold, lots of snow, also lots of hot. So I have quite a I have to take quite a bit of stuff on a through hike um, in order to kind of, I guess, acclimatize to those different situations. Overall, I guess I would say that I do like to pay attention to the weight of my gear, but also think it's really important to think about how well that gear is going to work. So sometimes in the past we've had stuff that's really, really ultralight, but it's not going to last and that stuff can be really expensive and then not last. So I've kind of um, fine-tuned my gear, I would say, to be things that, that are light and that will last a decent amount of time. Let's get into things. So I'll start with the big three. So if you're not familiar with what the big three is, that just stands for like your, your biggest three <laughs> items. Um, so anyone who's kind of talking about trying to whittle down weight or what, I, what items to invest in, they always kind of talk about the big three. So I think that's a good place to start. So first thing um, in the big three is your shelter. So um, this one must be a prototype. Um, so this is the Dostin Xmid one person, or one P. Uh, so this is actually designed by my husband, Dan. So I don't know how much detail I really want to go into because we have lots of videos already on this channel um, talking about the Xmid. And also I will link below the website where you can find more details about it. This is a one person tent. It weighs 908 grams and it's a pretty spacious tent, I would say. Um, it sets up with your trekking poles. I'd say the main things that I would like to mention on it is that it is really easy to set up. Some of the tents that I've had in the past have been kind of difficult to set up, I find, with a lot of like guessing on the angles and lots of stakes and lots of guy outs and things like that. This is just a rectangle that you pitch 90 degrees corners on. So four stakes, you insert your trekking poles and you have a double wall tent. So the Xmid um, uses trekking poles to set up. So that saves weight because most people hike with trekking poles anyways. So while we're on the topic of trekking poles, these are the ones that I used um, in order to use like a, a tent such as this, you're gonna want adjustable poles because depending on how the ground is, how uneven it is, you're gonna want that adjustability. This summer I used the Locust Gear trekking poles. Um, they have two adjustment points, um, so I can just slide them up and down and get that perfect pitch. Um, and also I can adjust them when I'm hiking if I need to. These have flick locks. So I do find them a little heavier than some of the poles I've used in the past. Um, yeah, so that's what I used this summer. So that covers the first of the, th the big three. And in the next one I wanted to discuss was the sleeping system. So I don't actually have my sleeping pad with me right now because we sent it in for a warranty. That was the Thermalest Uber Light. It is really stinking light but it has a very, a very low uh, value. It doesn't offer a long way of insulation, um, but I found it really comfortable. I do have to say that I need an inflatable pad. It doesn't have to be really, really thick, but I don't think I would fare well with some of those accordion style, um, non-inflatable options. Um, sleep is really important to me. So I always use an inflatable, but this is literally the lightest inflatable sleeping pad that I've seen that is still very functional. Um, again, not the warmest, so maybe not the best choice for the Great Divide Trail. Um, when I was out in 2019, it was quite cold some nights, so I did have to bundle up a lot in order to stay warm um, because there's a lot of cold air coming up from the floor if you don't have a good insulating pad. 
So anyways, that is off weight now for warranty because one of the baffles had had let go. So it had like this huge hump right, <laughs> right at the top of my back. So it wasn't the most comfortable, but that's why that's gone. Okay, so going along with the sleeping pad um, is the sleeping bag. This is how I store my sleeping quilt. Um, I use the Sea to Summit. This is an eight liter ultra cell is the material. Basically, this is like a waterproof stuff sack, the compression stack that you can really make it small. What I would do is I always had my sleeping bag, always had it in this so that it could be compressed and also so that it would be protected from water. I'll let you see. All right, so this is actually <laughs> my favorite piece of gear. I am obsessed with my sleeping quilt. So this one is from Enlightened Equipment. It's an, so it's EE Enigma is the name of the quilt. And it's amazing. So basically they're custom quilts. Uh, but yeah, you get to pick your color. You can pick um, what kind of fill down you want. And you can choose the size of the sleeping quilt. You can choose different features of like whether you want a closed box, foot box, or one that opens all the way. This is my quilt. So yeah, it's an Enlightened Equipment Enigma 950 fill down is what I went with. And mine is rated to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, I went with the closed toe box option. So basically the quilt opens up. It's got these snaps but I can have it open into this far to my feet. And then you have these snaps, so you can snap that underneath your body to kind of keep the air drafts from coming in. And it also has the cinch cord at the top. So once you put this behind your head, you can pull this nice and tight so that this is actually like around your neck. One of the downsides with quilts is that you don't have a hood but I never actually found that to be an issue. If it's that cold, I'll just sleep with a toque. And if it's really cold, I'll sleep with a toque and a down jacket that I can put my hood on as well. And that's kind of what I was mentioning about some of these like multi-use things. So when you have like a down jacket that has a hood, it can also be put in your sleeping system and you can save weight that way. So just little things like that to think about when you're purchasing things, how something can be uh, multi-use and different ways that you can save weight. A quilt is an awesome way to save some weight. This has been plenty warm for me and I really, really like it. So check them out, they're custom. Um, so the thing I really like about the DD40 pack is that everything is like really accessible on the go. And I think that's an important thing to consider, especially on a through hike, when you're really trying to make big mile days, you're gonna wanna have things easy to swap. So my favorite thing is definitely the one side pocket actually has this zipper that you can access while you're wearing the pack just by reaching back over to the left side, pulling that down and you have this massive pocket. I actually have a bunch of stuff in there from ski touring um, last weekend. But yeah, so that's easy to like have if you start your day with a toque on and you wanna switch to like a different hat when it starts to get warm or you wanna stuff your um, gloves away once you warm up, that kind of thing. You do have your hip pockets as well. So I always had those filled with snacks and things too. And then one more thing that I want to mention is that the straps are very similar to a running pack style. So they're a little bit more like tailored to the shape of the body. Um, and they have these really easy access zipper pockets on both sides that actually expand and get bigger when you put stuff inside. So I always had my camera on one side and then on the other side, I would keep my sunglasses and just little easy quick things like lip balm and sunscreen and DEET if the bugs were really bad. So it's just that ease of access I think is really important when you're picking a pack. You want it to be waterproof I would also say is really important, especially on something like the Great Divide Trail. So that's the, the DD40 pack. So next up is my cook system. 
So I used this 850 milliliter cooking pot. Um, we've had this for years. Inside, you have this tiny little alcohol stove. <laughs> so it is just very, very minimal. You just put your ethanol um, alcohol inside of there. So it's just an open flame type of stove. But these are so light. <laughs> this is something that I am so glad that I decided to just have something this simple. They're super cheap and so easy and so light. Um, massive, massive. And this pot is really light as well. And then inside you just have the cone. So it rolls up nice and tight. Put that cone together, put the stove underneath, light it with your fuel, and then your pot just sits inside nicely, right on that blim. And now you can boil water and cook your pastas and whatnots. So that's my little cook pot. So with that, um, I mentioned that you need to put alcohol in it. So we always just carry our alcohol in just a regular plastic bottle. But basically this is ethanol, ideally, if you could find ethanol, which is kind of hard to find. Or I believe it's methanol that I had most of the time because that's just easy to find at any hardware store and they all burn slightly different. So I would just have these in every resupply um, or damage burn anymore at each stop. Um, and then I actually, when I'm talking about cook systems, I actually didn't bring a bowl with me on the trip at all. So I would actually just eat my meals right out of the pot that I cooked it in. Also with the cook system, this is my mug that I had my coffee in. This is an MSO Titan titanium mug. Doesn't come with this Mia clean sleeve. So it's, it's a single wall mug, super lightweight, um, has these foldable handles so it fits nicely inside of the pot. Dan actually made, he just sewed this piece of neoprene together to make it double wall. Folds up nice and small. Um, yeah, I've had this for many years and quite happy with it. It's light. My spoon is a Sea to Summit titanium spoon. I love this spoon. Again, it's nice and lightweight. I only ever use a spoon. Um, and I'm definitely not a fan of plastic utensils because when I'm cooking and stirring something in my pot that's boiling, um, you're gonna be melting, essentially melting your, the bottom of your um, spoon in the bottom of your pot. So I've had this for several years and I'm quite happy with it. Okay, next in line is my water systems, water killing systems, um, filtration, that kind of thing. So I just, use like a plastic bottle kind of like the ones that have some height to them they just like fit nicely in my side pockets so this is the one that i used um this last summer and i think the summer before so they last a really long time um this is really lightweight um also they're really easy to get water into so if you're like at a water source and you're getting water out of the river it just flows into this nice and easy because it's a structured material as opposed to trying to get the river water to flow into something that's flexible like this. Um, so I always use this to drink out of during the day and to get water out of the river. And then I will put, if I want more water than this, put the excess water into the platypus. So I carry a platypus. So this is just my extra water killing capacity, um, which I, when I get to camp, I always fill up um, all of these. So I just have lots of water close by and I don't have to keep going to the creek back and forth. Well, if I have long days without water. So this is flexible. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of room when I don't need it. I'm not a fan of the bladders where you have like the hose. They freeze for one and they're just extra weight. So I think it's completely unnecessary when you can just drink out of something like this. And also when you have a bladder and it's in your backpack, you can't see how much water you have left. And you could just keep filling this every time you cross a creek and you're only killing one liter at a time, right? It makes sense to me. Again, trying to think of smart ways to save weight, to be efficient on the trail. And as far as filtration, I, <laughs> again, super ultra lightweight, I use these aqua tubs. And Dan and I have done that for every PCT, GDT, yo-yo, every trip in between. Um, 
one tiny little tablet of this. It's mostly chlorine, I believe, if not all chlorine, but one of these does a liter of water. So I would just pop one into this. I think you have to wait about 30 minutes before you can drink it. Yeah, it's just easy. Um, didn't, I didn't have to fiddle around a filter. So quick, so simple, so light. Okay, so going along with my water system is my food killing system. So I took this Ursak. Um, it's so beat up and disgusting. I carried an Osak. This is the larger size. We also have one that is smaller. I'd say maybe this big. I took the big one because I had eight days. I think it was the longest that I had. So this was enough to do that. Um, I don't bother putting a liner in or anything. I just shove my food in, I squish it, I make it fit. Um, and then at night, I don't have to worry about doing a bill hang. That actually would put like completely turn me off from hiking solo. That's how much I hate doing that. It just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of accuracy. Most of the bill hangs I see in the wild look like they would not work. So this way, I don't have to worry about that. A bill cannot get into this. Um, so basically I would just do this. When I get to camp, I would have my dinner and then I would put all my food in here, except for some, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But I would put my food into here and then tie it to a tree and I would just make sure that it was far enough away from when I was camping that I would be comfortable with an animal gnawing on it in the middle of the night. And I have, this one has definitely been chewed on. <laughs> you can tell the material gets kind of like these, this texture to it. Um, I don't have the next item with me, but I also use odor-proof sacks, but it's about this big. And I actually put my um, bedtime snack and my breakfast in that. So I actually sleep with my breakfast and coffee and my bedtime snack. So those odor-proof sacks, um, they're controversial. <laughs> Some people think like that's not really safe and you never know if it has like a tiny puncture. I just try to be really careful and mindful that when I close it, um, I try to leave like a tiny bit of air in it so that I can push on it and just see if it's deflating at all. Um, and then that way I know if there's air coming out. Still kind of questionable, I know, um, but I do do that. And that way in the morning I can just get my breakfast going super quick, nice and efficient. Um, and sometimes it's raining in the morning and you don't want to have to go get that food sack first thing in the morning. You just want to have coffee <laughs> before you take your camp down. Talk a little bit about clothes. When I first started my through hike, solo hike of the GDT, I was using ultra superior shoes. This time around, we actually found these Innovite Tela Ultra 260s, they're called. And they're really, really similar to the Ultras. Um, they have a wider, like a wide-ish toe box. It's not quite as wide as the ultras I find, but wide enough that when you get really hot feet or you're doing big miles, your feet tend to expand. You just need that extra space in your toes, I find, to not get as many blisters and stuff. So these are really, really similar to those. I was quite happy with them. I did a bunch of trail running with them this winter. So before I talk about my clothing, um, this is the sack that I put my clothes in. So this one is another Sea to Summit stuff sack. Um, it is a nine liter size, and that's what I put all my clothes in to keep them dry. So this is a waterproof sack. So most of my clothes would fit into here. And I also use this as a pillow. I forgot to mention in my sleep system that I don't actually carry a designated pillow. I just use this stuff sack with a few items in it. So next I'll talk about rain gear. I'll mention this one quickly. I just took it on this last two and a half weeks I did this summer. But this rain jacket is enlightened equipment, but it is like a really minimal rain jacket, um, but it's really ultra light. So this is one that I had gotten from enlightened equipment just to give them some feedback on. Um, it fits very, very big. This is a medium. So that's the one that I used this summer. But if I know that I'm gonna need a, a rain jacket that it's gonna perform a little bit better, like I wanted on my um, attempted through hike. I used the Arctic one. It is quite light while still fitting well and having like decent features and good quality zippers and that kind of thing. I find that I really like the hood of this one. It has like a, a nice fill at the top so it sheds water nicely. It doesn't have any adjustment clothes here because they just have it 
kind of in a stretchy material on the side, so that saves some weight. Um, it has some pit vents, or pit zips, that are just not a zipper actually, they're just kind of open material, so you're always getting a little bit of venting. And I love how it fits. This is a medium, um, and I would say that's really true to size. It has like no zippers, no pockets, like again, just an easy way to shed some weight. I'm very impressed with this coat. Um, and it is Glotex, obviously. It has the Glotex coating, but it actually has the Glotex blend um, waterproof layer in it. Next up for the rain system, I have my rain jacket, and then I have my rain pants. These are by the brand Hagloffs. Um, I actually, <laughs> I just got these this summer because I have had the same Go Light rain pants for over 10 years, like well before the PCT, they, but they were so shot. I actually had to get some new rain pants, um, super simple adjustment cords, and they're kind of a wider leg, which is actually nice for shedding water. I will now talk about my insulating hiking layers slash camping layers. So the first one is my Go Light Bitter Loot Down Pulka. This might be the oldest piece of camping gear I have. I've had this for 13 or 14 years. It does have 850 fill down, so decent quality down. And not only is this <laughs> really lightweight, but we actually took out an insert. There was like a half insert, I think, but Dan like cut it out as soon as I bought it. I remember being so upset about that. <laughs> It was like ways to save weight, right? This thing has served me very, very well. I don't actually hike in it very often just because it's really warm, but this is a nice piece for that camp or to wear to sleep underneath my sleeping bag if it's one of those colder nights. And then I can always wear the hood as well. When I'm on a through hike, I always take this one because there's gonna be nights that are really cold and days that are cold and mornings that are cold. But this last summer when I was only out for two and a half weeks, um, the forecast was really good, so I actually only had this one. This is a jacket by Mont Bell. It is also a down layer. I'm a big fan of down over synthetic. It just compresses a lot better, um, and I just think it's amazing. So, oh my gosh. I've also had this, like, for 14 years. But this thing is amazing. Um, it's not really, really warm. I think of it more as, like, similar to, like, wearing maybe a merino wool shirt, but it compresses so much smaller and it's really lightweight. So I actually don't bring any long sleeve merinos or long sleeve synthetic shirts unless it's like super cold. Actually, they do still make this, or they make something similar to this. And these are the down pants. And I only needed to really use this because my sleeping pad was not enough insulation once it was the fall and wet. But anyway, these were made by a company called Goose Feet. I believe they're out of the States and they're custom made down pants. But yeah, they're custom fit, so you measure your own body and he makes them. And they're pretty awesome. <laughs> I, um, I really, really love these. They just, they're very uncommonly needed in my life. So going along the theme of insulated layers, um, toques. I take any old toque when I go hiking, really, and on my true hike. This is the one I happen to take. I, one of these years I should probably have a toque that's lightweight and dries quick and is that kind of thing, but I usually just grab any old toque to be honest. Um, and then I always take, on my hike I took these Patagonia fleece gloves. They're just pretty minimal, they're pretty light, um, they're definitely showing some wear in the palms and on the fingers. In the morning, you get up, you're cold, you your hands and extremities are really cold. So I wear these in the morning and then I just pop them off once I'm warmed up. And they're really nice for that camp. And I also like to use them to cook and stuff. Like when I need to strain water out of my pot, I can like touch the pot with these and strain it. And that's it for insulating layers. So moving on to just like my everyday wear clothing. Um, the first item I can't find right now and that's my Topo Designs mesh cap. Um, so that's just nice to keep the sun out of my eyes, um, to cover up my greasy, disgusting hair. It's just a cap that I wear all the time. 
But the other item that I wear often is my mech wind shirt. And that's just like a nice light wind protection shirt, bug protection, sun protection. So, um, socks. So on a through hike of the GDT, my sections were between five to 10 days. And I found that hiking with three pairs of socks was enough. So I had these Go Light socks. They were just like really small, really simple, really light socks. They barely come up the ankle. Um, so I had two pairs of this exact sock. They dry easy, quickly, that kind of thing. And then I had one pair that was just slightly heavier. And again, they just kind of come up to the ankle. Three pairs of socks seem to work for me. Um, my thoughts on that are you can rinse and or wash the pair of socks that you wore that day, that evening, every time when you get to camp. Um, as long as you're kind of washing them consistently and then drying them on your pack the next day. Um, sometimes they even just dry at camp that night. So three is lots. Um, and then this is like a sports bra that I use. It's by um, Lululemon. And I just liked this one because it's light and simple and I could swim in it easily. So this actually was my bathing suit as well. And I only had one bra for the whole trail. Again, I would just like wash it and rinse it at night at camp when it was needed. Seems unnecessary to have more than one sports bra. So pants, these are the Mech Akamina pants. I got these before a yo-yo hike, so they've had quite a bit of miles on them and they're getting to the end of their life. But I did do my, my GDT solo hike in them too. They're just really basic. They're light. Um, they just have a drawstring at the top. Um, pockets are probably excessive. That's kind of more weight than it would need. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with these. I've told a lot of people about them who've asked like, what pants are you wearing? So really good to have something like this for bug protection. Um, if I could, I would hike in like Lulu tights or spandex tights because I find them way more comfortable just to have that waistband that extends. But mosquitoes can get through that and the mosquitoes on the GT can be absolutely horrendous. So I sometimes had to hike in these when it was really, really hot out just because I needed the protection from mosquitoes. So this material provides that. They can't bite through it. And this is probably unnecessary, but for some reason they like hiking in like three quarter length tights sometimes. <laughs> and then I often will sleep in these too. I like to keep them pretty clean for sometimes swimming, but definitely for sleeping. And then that way after I swim and I'm clean at the end of the day, I can just put on something dry and um, comfortable because these are just really stretchy. So these are the New Balance tights that I've had for a while. I actually have two pairs of them because I was so excited about the weight of these. They were really good lightweight um, tight, so I ended up buying two at the time. I don't have like a designated sleep outfit. I think that's crazy. <laughs> I just sleep in whatever's clean, but I do tend to try to keep those clean because I find them more comfortable to sleep in. This is my Lululemon skirt that I hike in so much. This is basically almost a luxury item, I would say. Um, I should just hike in shorts like I used to, but I love how this feels. But it's heavy. It's embarrassing when I put how heavy this is. Um, yeah, it's overkill, because when you hike in a skirt, it's gonna have like shorts inside. So it has like built-in shorts inside and they're stretchy and they're super heavy. Plus it has a skirt, so it's, it's heavy. So top, top layers, I just bring two short sleeve shirts um, and then that way I can just always have a clean one on the go and just wash it at camp. So this is the tank top that I hiked in this last summer. So this has a Lululemon um, tank top. It's just lightweight. Honestly, this is just something I already owned and I weighed it on a scale and was like, that's good to go. I'm going to wear that. And then I have a Lululemon t-shirt. And yeah, so it's just basic lightweight, wicks the moisture, um, doesn't smell, it really doesn't smell. I do use deodorant though. This is another luxury item. 
Um, these are just Old Navy flip-flops. I love having something I can step into at camp and not be in my wet shoes. That way my shoes can dry, my feet can have a chance to like ill out. So I spend like literally the second I get to camp, knees are on, my shoes are off. Because I wear my Taco Designs cap most days, I find that I don't actually wear sunglasses that often. I'm actually considering not taking sunglasses on my next long distance hike just to save weight and it seems kind of redundant. But yeah, these are um, SunCloud, I think the brand is SunCloud, um, sunglasses, they're nothing fancy. It is Smith Optics, like sister brand, like the cheaper brand. So I'm gonna try to go through this next section fast because it's kind of not as exciting, but <laughs> bear spray. Um, I just kept this easy to deploy. So I didn't have like a special thing that it was attached to so I could get to it quickly. I just had it in my side pocket that I could reach like this. So, and then I would have it pointing out so I could grab it quickly. And I did practice this motion many, 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 many times. It felt kind of silly, but it actually makes sense that you do want to be able to get to this quickly. But I'm not convinced that I need to carry one of those specific carriers that are really heavy and bulky and so that it's like right here. I found like this was fine. And I did practice that motion. I felt really confident in that. Um, so next is what I call my ditties bag. I don't know if people call it that, but it's just like my miscellaneous bag. I don't even know what pack this is. I've had it for so long. Oh, I think Dan made this. Oh, this is a homemade one. Dan made this. I've had this for ages. Okay, so just quickly about my ditties pack. Um, I don't have a lot of like packs and everything has its own heavy pack. So I put everything in Ziploc bags. Again, it's another weight saving way of doing things. So um, this one has some vitamins and maybe I'll talk about that in a different video if we talk about what I ate on the trail but it has some leftover vitamins and some naproxen in it so those are the pills that I took with me naproxen it's an anti-inflammatory um, if I had any foot pain or any muscle pain from hiking a lot um, also menstrual pain so I used naproxen in a ziploc bag this is my first aid kit which has actually some more naproxen in it and has a couple of band-aids um, my first aid kit was very minimal. It had more than two band-aids, but not much else. So take that with a grain of salt. That might not be for you. Um, I also had this little pack that has some um, tenacious tape if I need to fix anything, like a down jacket. I have the specific patch for my sleeping pad in here. I have a couple of fire starters and I have an extra thick lighter that I always kept in this bag so it was dry um, because the other one I keep in my pot and it sometimes got wet and it wouldn't want to work. I have a comb, really basic brush. So this is camp suds that I just put into these smaller containers and I would just have one on each resupply. So this is what I showered with. Um, I would just rinse away from the water source. Next up is my toothbrush. So I have this little tiny um, bamboo toothbrush. This is actually a kid's toothbrush, but it's nice and light by being this way and you're not out there for that long. So I think this is enough to keep up your oil hygiene. And then this is the toothpaste that I used. It's just a small size. Um, it's actually 28 grams when it's full. So this is pretty heavy. And that's 28 grams of toothpaste plus the tube. So this one's down to about half full, so this is more reasonable, but I did take this full. Deodorant, I use the Dove Go Fresh. Dan and I have used this for years because it's like a fresh scent that I'd say is kind of gender neutral. So we just share this when we go on the trail together. Um, sunscreen, I just put in this little, little container like this and just add each resupply had one to replace. It's not a lot of sunscreen, but it was enough. And I also have earplugs that I bring with me. Um, I don't actually really use these at all. I don't really recommend that you <laughs> have no sound when you're sleeping because it's nice to hear if there's an animal or whatever. So I don't actually use these. The only time I do find these helpful is if I'm at a campsite with lots of people and they're up late being loud or something and hikers tend to go to bed at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. So this just kind of drowns out the noise. 
Um, I always have a couple extra hair elastics that I keep. This is just one of them, but I usually have like two or three of those in the bottom of my miscellaneous pack. And this is the Swiss Army knife that I use on my hikes. This one's really nice for long hikes because it actually has um, a nail clipper added into it, which is really handy. And then the last thing in my miscellaneous or ditties is my headlamp. This one is called the Phoenix HL10 and it is just a really minimal, not really bright light, but um, when I'm backpacking in the Canadian Rockies in the summer, it is bright out till like 10 o'clock at night. So I very, very rarely use this. Um, you're not really doing night hiking on the GDT like you do on the PCT, so having really good illumination isn't that important to me. So this is just a nice lightweight option. And that is it for my little miscellaneous stuff. So next up is kind of navigational um, safety electronic tools. So first of all, I had my iPhone with me. And then as far as navigating, I just had the Gut Hook app for the GDT. And I used that. It actually has the GDT on it right now. There we go. Um, I use that for navigating. It's a great app. It has lots of hiker notes and it can just kind of help you know how far it is to trail and stay on trail and stuff. I also did take an InReach SE. So this is the original model. So it's definitely bigger than the mini, but we just haven't taken the plunge to invest in a new one yet because this one's serving us perfect, um, perfectly fine. So this was the device that I had the SOS option if I needed to in an absolute emergency. But what I use this for regularly was to text back and forth with Dan, just if I had any questions or if I needed him to do a last second site booking because the nature of the GDT is you can get a little bit off, a little bit off pace. Um, and in order to charge those devices, I used this Anchor um, battery bank. This is 10,000 milliamp hours on it and it's like it's heavy they're all heavy but um i've definitely seen hikers with heavier ones it just depends how much you think you need to charge your stuff for the gdt hike with this i would get about maybe two phone charges an in reach charge and i could charge my camera a couple of times too so for me it was enough thing that i did as well as i had my my maps my paper maps mailed ahead i had like a visual and I could plan out my day and kind of see where the campsites are and have little notes. So in order to charge all my devices, I did need to bring some clothes and whatnot. Um, this was the one that I could use in a wall when I was in town just to charge up things. But when I was on the trail, I would use the anchor, this guy, my battery bank, and just attach this cord attached to my camera and my inReach. So this cord did both of those. And then I had to bring like just a regular iPhone one as well that I could also attach to my iPhone. Other than that, I just had some headphones if I wanted to listen to podcasts. This is like a really important piece of equipment is my iPhone, it's my navigation. So I always kept it in one of these dry sacks that you can actually um, use the phone like as a touch screen with it in here so it's it's really nice that I don't even have to take it out when I need to use it so this ensures that it stayed dry when it needed to and then last thing is my camera so um, this is nothing fancy this is what I filmed all of my footage and all my photos were on this as well it shoots um, HD so high definition footage so I can get you know really good quality shots. Um, but again, it's nothing fancy. Whew, so that's a lot of talking. So that concludes all the gear that I used on the Great Divide Trail for my solo hike. Um, my base weight, if you're wondering, so if you were to add up the weight of all this stuff, minus if I was wearing a little bit of it, that's generally how you figure out a base weight. 10.65 pounds is my base weight. So anyways, thanks you guys, thanks for tuning in, and I hope this was helpful and useful, and maybe we will see you on the Great Divide Trail. Take care.